What a wonderful thing. I have just the greatest bit of good news for you. A white pill, so to speak, uh, in, this, in this world where race baiting and being, you know, uh, white people bad is a commonly accepted trope, narrative, or whatever from mainstream media, video games, television, movies, music, just about everything. We had p- perhaps the biggest most spectacular woke backfire in history. This movie's trailer had more dislikes than dollars made on its preview its preview day. It had more dislikes than people that went to see the movie this weekend. The critics hated it because it wasn't anti-white enough. The viewers hated it because it was woke trash whose entire premise was white people bad. An an AI, I mean, Google's AI could have written this movie extremely easily and it has flopped in spectacular fashion. By the way, uh, I am streaming daily. Right now it's at uh, noon or 1 Eastern. I'm moving that to be at... Four or five Eastern, sorry, five Eastern going forward. And I'm only going to stream on, I'm like I'm doing the Tim Pool model. So I have quarter cast. Um, you can see my stream today with Gothics. Uh, if you didn't see it, you know, on the main channel, it's because all my live streams are here on uh, quarter cast now. So if you're interested in watching my live streams or you want to check out my stream with Gothics today, I'll leave a link to this channel and you can subscribe. Or you can, you know, just check out the channel too. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's only one video there right now, but obviously there'll be a new video every single day there. A magical society, the American Society of Magical Negroes, a movie that has 130,000 dislikes. Let's start there. Just three months ago, the trailer comes out. It is spectacularly anti-white. Walking through a room full of white people, you can see how they're saying this stuff about you. White, white people are the most dangerous person, people on the planet. I mean, that's literally a line in the movie. On the planet. What's the most dangerous animal on the planet? Dangerous animal on the planet. Sure. White people, when they feel, feel uncomfortable. White people. 130,000 dislikes. Hugh, hey, leave a thumbs up on this video for that. 130,000 dislikes. Of course, the comment, if only there was an American society of talented film producers. I have a dream that my four little children will live one day in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. Hollywood, why do our movies keep losing money? Also Hollywood. Now I understand why YouTube removed the dislike button. That comment alone has 11,000 upvotes. What's the most dangerous animal? Someone got paid to write this. It got approved, rehearsed, filmed, edited, and released. Nobody thought it was a bad idea. This film essentially was for black people who hate white people. I mean, there are some of them. But most crazily is that the movie is basically a cringe rom-com. It's a cringe rom-com that has, you know, centers around this idea that white people bad. I can't believe Hollywood's going broke when they're pumping out instant classics like this. Of course, 27% audience score, 31% critic score. And you'll be shocked. The critic score, the critics are not saying, oh, the movie's racist. They're saying it wasn't racist enough. This dull and mishandled racial satire has bland characters, a weak story, stale jokes that repeatedly miss the mark. This terrible misfire also fails at spoofing romantic comedies. Well, that's actually just a legit, this movie's bad. There are versions of this premise relevant to the modern world, but the film's point of view, state of race relations, feels stuck somewhere around 1950. Has a fiery premise. White people bad, by the way, is the premise. But tepid execution leaves its satire feeling lukewarm. So it didn't go hard enough. 
like the yarn sculpture art Aaron, like the yarn sculpture art Aaron has trouble peddling. It's tough to imagine anyone buying what Kobe Libby is selling here. There are so many missed opportunities for humor or any deeper exploration of the story. Despite some scattered big laughs, the muddled satire grasps that it's navigating tricky thematic territory but isn't edgy or provocative as intended. The almost shockingly genteel, it's almost shockingly genteel despite the discomfort courted by its title. This promising satire placates instead of provoking. White guy says, not racist enough. So many disparate ideas and tones are mashed up here and none of them gel. Here's, uh, what should be a daring exercise ends up being a lethargic analysis that doesn't have much, as much bite as it thinks it does. It's a noble effort to be racist that lands with underwhelming results. I mean, you know, ironically, a film about making white people comfortable made me uncomfortable. <laughs> he lifts, he only dips his toes in the waters in the film's thesis and seems unwilling to dissect or interrogate it in meaningful fashion. So it wasn't, so the woke film critics say it wasn't racist enough. Director Kobe Libby, the actor Justice Smith's, and actor Justice Smith, by the way, <clears throat> white parents, has a white mom, I believe. The American Society of Magical Negroes from film Focus Features bombed at the box office. It's in its debut, only grossing $1 million. A million dollars? The budget for this film has been deeply safeguarded. It will come out one day, but there is no doubt in my mind that it has probably a minimum budget of 10 million and perhaps 20 million, 10 to 20 million. Okay. And then again, remember marketing budget and remember that they only get half of that, that number, but the theaters keep half of that $1 million in its opening weekend. They netted 500 grand on a movie that they spent somewhere between 10 and $20 million making and another 10 and $20 million marketing. Think about that. As a percentage, it's probably the worst tank in box office history. The numbers report the film only grossed $1 million this past weekend after it's screened in 1,100 theaters. Per theater gross was only $1,000. Not only did the film, poor, film perform exceptionally poor, by the way, this is via That Park Place, at the box office, critics and movie goers go who saw the film panned it. Rotten Tomatoes, the score is 30% from critics on Tomato Reader. It received an average of 5 out of 10 with just 15 reviews. Top critics review scores even worse with a 19% score. If we look at the top critics, right, it's even worse. I wonder if you can... Oh, yeah, here. Top critics at 19%. On Metacritic, the film only has 52 score or has a 52 from 18 critics, just five positive reviews. The user score sits at 0.5 out of 10, with just two positive reviews to 39 negative reviews. IMDb, it has a 2.7 out of 10. The reviews and bo poor box office are not surprising. This film's trailer marketed itself as racist. The film trailer sees Justice Smith's character, Aaron, spelled with an A. Feeling discomfort, feeling the discomfort of white people. A character played by David Allen Greer even states, watching you walk through a room full of white people is the most painful thing I've ever seen. At what point in the trailer, they talk about white people are the most dangerous. Of course, white people feeling uncomfortable precedes a lot of bad stuff for us. That's why we fight white discomfort every day, because the happier they are, the safer we are. I don't know if crime statistics would agree with that. The film's director also made it abundantly clear that the entire goal of the film was to lecture people and use it as a bludgeon to achieve political power. He told NBC News, the conversation around the expectation that black people are prioritizing white comfort over our own history and our own sense of self is an incredibly contemporary problem. It's happening politically in America right now. You see laws being passed in places like Florida around what black history is taught and literally saying that elements of black history, things that really happen in America, cannot be said out loud in the classroom if it makes kids uncomfortable. I would 
like to ask for a simple citation, please. By the way, this is the same guy. The same guy that begged people. Begged people to not look at the trailer. Please don't judge the film by its trailer. By the way, a trailer that was watched, edited, and signed off on by the director. He's only mad that their trailer got absolutely destroyed into oblivion. Absolutely nuked from orbit. And now he's like, well, don't watch a trailer. Still give me your money. Still give me your, give me my, your money, please. Money, please. White people bad. Money, please. Remember, it's not always about the best films getting made. The ones that are getting greenlit have a message. There is a reason that somebody signed off on the 20 million, 10, 20, 30 million dollar budget on this film because it has an approved message. And that is white people bad. And I am so proud of the cinema goers out there that ignored this film, let it tank. And when the articles in inevitably come out and say that it's white people's problem because we didn't go see and support this movie, don't let them gaslight you. If it was a good movie, people would have seen it. It was not a good movie. It was crap race bait, and I'm glad that it tanked. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it. Don't forget to check out my QuarterCast channel if you're interested in daily live streams. It'll be every day, Monday through Friday. Um, it's obviously also on Rumble, so it's up to you where you want to watch, but I want you to be able to access my live streams. So uh, link to QuarterCast. You can watch Gothics and I talk about the magical Negroes in this film too. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.